Hello everybody, this is Bud Rich and in this video I will show you something really really good. Something great has happened. Uh, but first let me just uh, show off a bit here on my work I've been doing here for the last week or so. I've been working uh, a lot on i3 as uh, specifically i3 viswis and i3 list. I added multi-monitor support now. It's not added to the release yet so uh, I'm still uh, tweaking it a bit uh, so I hopefully I will release it uh, the upcoming or this week here now um, but it took took a lot longer than I thought it would because um, I realized I, I needed to, to rewrite uh, very large or very large but a, a lot more code than than I actually uh, thought I would have to do but uh, uh, I have done that and uh, don't worry it actually feels good to to be in the i3 as zone so to speak um, but this video is about something completely different uh, here now oh god damn it god damn it now i did it almost spoiled the whole video there okay okay whatever uh, what I actually did there was launching Vivaldi with my key binding. I'm so used to it. And this instance of Vivaldi, it's uh, started from the terminal here with the default uh, uh, Vivaldi stable command. So this is like no special stuff. And I will show you that special stuff. And that special stuff is a way to override uh, a, a system UI font. I've made a video about this in the past, uh, and for some reason today, uh, I ended up on the uh, uh, Bootstrap uh, official website here. And Bootstrap is this stupid uh, front-end CSS framework that was uh, a big thing like 10 years ago, or it was released 10 years ago, and it was like everyone started using it. Ah. And now no one talks about it and I don't think anyone wants to use it. It's, it. it's just a really stupid thing. And for some reason I ended up on this web, website and it looked like this. It, you know, this is a front-end CSS uh, uh, website. And even them uses this. Uh, uh, or even them. It's often the, the more designy <laughs> the website is, the, the, the larger the chance is that they are using this system UI font. Uh, and I made a video in the past about this, ranting about it, and, and I actually got uh, some some upset comments uh, on that one. That one, I think that user or, or viewer deleted his own comment, uh, but they called it. They basically called me an idiot for saying this. But I I, I don't care uh, because I think I am right on this. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's my opinion. This is how how I see this, and this is how I see it. There's no denying that this looks stupid. And the only way to fix that is to change the UI font because in 2016 or late 2016, uh, almost at in two th early 2017, uh, Google started rolling out uh, yet another new amazing browser feature uh, that allowed uh, CSS authors to use. Uh, um, I think this is the story now. Take it with a grain of sa salt here. Uh, um, that allowed users to to um, or developers to instead of specifying uh, a specific font, for example, uh, some fonts could be Hack or Inconsolata or, or or Arial or Times New Roman. That's that's a font. Just so we know what we are talking about here. Uh, but instead of, of specifying uh, a specific font, they added this new uh, option so you can instead use uh, something called System UI font, which is used here. Uh, this one, I know it's very hard for you to probably to read here, uh, it's even difficult for me. So this font here, System UI, it's called. And what that will, will do, now I changed that to hack here, so now it uses the hack font. But when you set it to, to system UI, it will use the system's UI font, of course. It, you can hear it on the name, right? Uh, so you can have a generic font name and it will load a font that always is installed and that always works. So all of that sounds great, right? Uh, and 
that is why web developers use this uh, because uh, they they think ah that's great now I don't have to ship a custom font or or, or uh, fetch a font from Google Fonts or whatever. But the thing is, uh, this has been available for as long as I can remember. You have always been able to, to write like sans serif, for, for instance. And then it will load the default sans serif font. And I think there's also, what is it, serif. Yeah, now you can see it's a different font here. And there's another generic one that's called monospace. Uh, and the fonts loaded now, they are not the system UI default, default system UI fonts. They are the browser's default fonts, which uh, you can uh, customize in, in your browser settings. This, this uh, has been around since as long as I can remember. I think I, I had this in my first uh, Netscape Navigator brow browser back in the day, you know, I could, uh, and I did change the font. And I think this is this is one of those few customizations that a lot of people do. They change the fonts in there, uh, and, and something everyone knows how to do. You have used Microsoft Word, and you have I like to write my text in Comic Sans, and then you set that in your browser and do that, whatever, and you just set set your default font, you know. Let's see if we can find it here. Here, here you can see. see. So I have uh, the standard font if if nothing is declared because also that's also a way to get because you will always get text in the browsers nowadays you have, don't have to define any font whatsoever and then it will use like the default default fonts so here I think I can even set it to the standard being sans serif or serif or whatever but I have my standard noto sans here and sans serif to noto sans serif to go mono and mono space to hack that's how I like it. Uh, or actually I would like a different serif font here, I don't know why I have Go Mono, but whatever. Uh, so why use this system UI? I, I, I don't know. Because in my opinion it should never be used on the web. Uh, it kind of makes sense uh, if you would make uh, an Electron app and you, you are using a browser, because I, I guess it's available, or, or I'm pretty sure it's available uh, in the Electron framework as well. You can use System UI. And then it kind of makes sense if you're creating a desktop application in Electron. And Electron, as we all know, is a browser, you know, but in, yeah, it's a desktop app, but whatever. Then it kind of makes sense to use the same. Uh, UI font in that application as other applications, but the browser and websites are not really uh, applications and, and a lot of the text is uh, I think it's fine to have different fonts or at least use like uh, sans uh, and uh, sans serif and monospace for monospace You cannot just use the system UI for uh, everything uh, That might work on some operating system. It all depends on, on what those settings are, you know, and it really doesn't work with my font. And also, apparently, um, Google uh, or Chromium and Vivaldi and all other Chromium-based browsers, they it doesn't look into the uh, font config whatsoever. Because in my font, now I don't remember here because this is like take two here, but I have in font config, this is why I am able to use this uh, fixed fixed sys uh, font here uh, for my UI font because I have a, a font config file here that uh, forces it into a special uh, or a specific size here so if the size is anything other than this it will always set it to 11 here I think this is points I, uh, I don't remember yeah it's two different uh, uh, size units here, points and pixels. I never remember which one is which here, but I had ha, had to set it up like this. Uh, but uh, and that means that my font, I cannot set this font to a different font size. Uh, see if we do this, and here we can see fix this in this list here. So no matter. What I change the font size here, it doesn't change the preview and the other font sizes, font, fonts you will see, I can change the font size and it will change the preview here in, in the window, if I'm not mistaken. Let's take some something normal here, or like this. You see it changes this, well I guess that was a pretty bad example since it didn't have any 
this guy changes and, and we can see the preview changes as well but my fixed sys it always stay it doesn't matter if if you set and this is true if you would set it in uh, in um, applications and stuff and and a lot of applications changes the font sizes for different things uh, in different windows and stuff uh, like for example the title bar here could be bold or things like that but I have found that if I force uh, fixed sys to always be displayed at this uh, font size and always be bold, also those window borders, I know it's I, I have a GTK theme that, that I have kind of broken myself because of whatever. Uh, but uh, if I do this, it's totally usable. And this is one of the few things I believe on... on the, um, Linux, at least on Xorg, I, I'm not sure if Wayland does this, but I, I think they do uh, uh, read um, this font config. Almost all programs uh, respect the font config, as far as I know. I guess, of course, there are uh, <laughs> exceptions, but um, most of the time this just works, uh, except for Chromium-based browsers. So when I saw this site today, uh, with this uh, stupid um, stupid uh, stupid font let's change it back UI there no didn't work change it back so when I saw this page today I thought, I wonder if someone have fixed this because I, I, I'm so tired of making these custom CSS. I, I actually seldom do that. I, I just, if I see a web page like, like this, I, I just close it actually. Uh, and if it's an article, I open reader mode and, and look at it in that uh, instead because I cannot read this. Um, so I searched uh, around a bit uh, and I actually found, found something here that I haven't seen before. Uh, how to uh, how this works I, I don't know a very very small little thing here it's almost like a wiki page uh, on, on dev.2 by, by one of the authors here uh, who have made a little write-up on how this works and apparently chromium it will read the system UI from the GTK 3 settings and Firefox will respect uh, uh, font config so you can just set up a, a rule here uh, in font config and I, I actually seriously uh, thought about switching to Firefox just for this because I, I think this is this is kind of telling it's like why aren't uh, Chromium also doing this it's so weird and why why do they even depend on GTK at all they, it, they shouldn't have to do that in, in, in a browser really uh, whatever but they do uh, so what you can do is change the GTK settings um, here I have the settings file open it's uh, this one config GTK 3 uh, settings INI and here we can see uh, uh, um, the font being set and apparently it is hack 2 yeah I think I was experimenting by with this because it's it, uh, uh, um, or maybe I wasn't. Um, you have to re reload this file. You have to close the browser, edit this file, and then reload the GTK th uh, theme. And then it might work. Uh, but the problem then is that all your UI will now have a font. So I have to choose, e either start the browser, and of course that, that is just as easy as changing the font in this appearance thing here. If I would change the font here uh, to a different one and start uh, uh, the browser, it will, will not have this uh, issue. Um, but then I thought, uh, I wonder if it isn't possible to... Um, use the xfconf uh, query uh, command uh, i remember I, I think i did videos about this as well so let's see if we do this no we do this xf ah oh, god damn it i have it on the <laughs> on the terminal that is running uh, the browser but i think whatever it's fine 
Let's save the URL to bootstrap here somewhere. Just paste it here, whatever. And then we close this this one. There, I have. <laughs> was experimenting with, with this, so I had it in, in the history. And you can see it's it's a lot to, to look up here to figure out what uh, how, how to change this setting. But this uh, with this, I can actually change the font here. We change it to yeah, for example, hack twenty four. You see, it changes the font immediately. It changes. Uh, uh, well, here it got really weird. It said it's a non. Not sure why. Ah, something fixed. Fixed sys twelve. There. Now it works. Uh, so with this command, you can change the font size. Then I realized that. Uh, or wondered that maybe I can just temporarily set the font size to whatever I would like to override system UI with, use this command, set that, and then start the browser. And as soon as the browser has started, I switch it back to whatever font I, I had before. You can also fetch uh, values here if you don't use this uh, set stuff, just, just use this. Then you can see it prints whatever font um, or whatever property that property has or whatever. There is also this programs, the, the settings editor, where you can view uh, uh, all, all these uh, settings because you have to write it like this. Channel is X settings, is this one. Then property slash GTK because that is the, the group where you want, want to change something and then the name. And then you also have to define which type it is and uh, then set and then the string you want to set here. So it, it's really awkward to, to do it like this, but if you put it in a script, which I have done, I've added it here now to my Vivaldi Rising, it looks uh, like a mess, but it kind of works. Um, also added it to, let, let's see, I made a simple ver version of this. Uh, XFQ, here it is. I think this is much better. Um, so what I do here is uh, I declare a variable called uh, notosans14, uh, then a variable containing the window ID of uh, a window with a class uh, Vivaldi stable. If that variable is empty, meaning this window doesn't exist, then it will store the current font doing this basically, so uh, in, in a variable, and then uh, set change the font with the uh, Notosans 14 here in this case, start Vivaldi in the background and then do a new X2 tool here uh, and searching for, for the window again but now with the sync option and that means it will keep on, it will wait till it have found that window and when it have then it will uh, reset the font to this, uh, to what we actually had. So. With that said, uh, check this out. Uh, yeah, we can. Let's start this script then. I guess we have to close Vivaldi in case it's open. No, it's not. Or is it? No, it's fine. So we do XFQ. That will start uh, this script here. And if you paid attention, maybe you didn't now. <laughs> but it actually changed uh, uh, the the font size in in, in the through in our window there for for a brief. Uh, uh, moment. So if you go to bootstrap now, we can see now it doesn't have that. Sure, this font doesn't look perfect either, but it's a lot better. Uh, I just uh, try this. Uh, yeah, I, I needed something to, to test here. But as you can see, th this looks uh, kind of weird with the P and the H here, but I don't know. That is also and this is actually Notosans, that is a very like, likely candidate to be a UI font, I guess, but whatever. They don't care about this, these uh, web dev uh, guys at all. And I have no idea why they insist on using this uh, systems, uh, system UI instead of just writing it as I showed you there. Uh, with If they really want a sans uh, font, just write sans serif. And if you want a serif font, write serif, you know. Or if you want a monospace font, write monospace. It's it's not harder than that. But the best thing is to not define a font at all and then just use the default font that the user have set. Do you prefer a serif or sans serif font for when you read text, whatever? 
Uh, but this works, so this is a way to do this. Um, but just as I showed you there, I, I and I don't think I will go through this at all because it does a lot of other things as well. But this is how I start Vivaldi, but the, it, it's the same concept. Um, testing if it exists, if it doesn't, it sets this, start it, blah, blah, blah. So this is a way now to... Um, to uh, fix this issue and this will work now system wide for example this uh, this is one place uh, which is where you cannot really write style sheets either because many of these uh, extensions and stuff like that uses the system UI so this page would look uh, really really annoying uh, without this or maybe it's this here yeah I guess this was that but now this is the system UI we, we can look at it again here and sure, of course, this this is not a problem if you don't have a stupid UI font. But should the browser decide what I use as my UI font? I don't think so. No. Or wait, did I use the same command? No. Huh, okay, maybe this uh, that pay, uh, that settings page there, but I know a lot of extensions uses uh, system UI font, so it looks kind of weird. Now I also have a lot of rules uh, or style sheets and stuff, which I now can remove here, uh, since um, well, it's not that many, but here is my fallback guy here. You can see I I, I override a bunch of. Uh, um, or I force, and, and this is not good either, because that will force this uh, font on everything on that page, and sometimes that is not what you want, you know. Uh, so this is a much better, uh, much faster also, I guess, because you don't have to read any external CSS, and you never have to set anything up, except that starting script, you know, with a, a, a font that you would like to use, because it looks like this isn't going away at all, it's... It, the opposite more and more sites are starting to using using this system UI uh, and uh, yeah I think it's really stupid use this for apps you know if you write a electron app or whatever but never use it for websites it's it it's it's really really stupid and uh, I also read that uh, they are now uh, I think they have already introduced it into the latest versions of Chrome now, so so you can also set now system UI, uh, uh, system UI sans and system UI serif and system UI monospace to use. Yeah, the systems. I don't know why you would like to do that when you got browser defaults. It's. Uh, uh, I don't think it makes any sense. Even if you don't have a broken font, it doesn't. Make, it still doesn't make any sense. And like the Windows UI font, I I, I don't remember if it's uh, Segoe uh, UI uh, still, but that is like it's the fonts. The UI fonts are designed to be UI fonts. They are they are not designed to be like. If you want to read a, a long article or something like that, they are, they are more made to be clear as on buttons and stuff like that, you know. So why? Ah, but whatever. I don't have to get annoyed. And every time I see this, this it's it's like uh, I get a, get a little fire in my in my brain. Um, but now that will never happen again. I will always uh, always just. And here, look at the file manager. Changes the font here while. Uh, Vivaldi starting up and you see my script is actually slower in in toggling this because I do a lot of other things I was looking at this script before try to fix it a bit making it a bit Faster, but it's still a bit slow Because I start Vivaldi from uh, a terminal is started from the uh, whatever. Let's not get into that This is great stuff uh, in uh, the bud uh, bud rich world in my for, for my personal uh, um, well-being this is a this is good news but it feels like no one else is bothered uh, by this at all because i uh, 
there is no uh, rants or articles or anything about this system UI that I can find or I guess there are a lot of like these CSS tricks uh, articles saying that you should use system UI I haven't even read them I just get angry when I do but um, yeah, if I want to use fixed sys, even if, yeah, there are a lot of, uh, I, I understand the arguments for that, but that's my preference for my system. It have been working fine for me. And if you have followed my channel, you know that I have been using this. I have been using the same font for everything here for at least four years. Uh, and I have been using this before that also. So why, why should, browsers uh, decide things like that they can decide the default forms in the browser if they want to but yeah doesn't make any sense also here new i3 list output format you can now also get the root container id it's much nicer also much faster or much faster but uh, i shaved off about uh, five milliseconds or something or maybe seven so so i3s will now work smoother as soon as I update but I thought I had made make this uh, um, Vivaldi browser uh, thing here and of course this applies to Vivaldi and other chromium based browsers I guess brave also uh, but Firefox you can use uh, Firefox have the same issue that it will uh, that uh, yeah the issue is web developers not understanding what this system UI is really supposed to be used for so they use it on, on regular web pages so that is the issue and that doesn't matter what which browser you use if it's not like a terminal based browser I guess uh, but on Firefox you can change uh, you can you can create a font config rule instead which is uh, much better you see, now, now I had to do this hackish solution here. It would be so much better on every level if I could uh, add a, a, a font config rule like for every other application. And I, I don't know. Uh, this has really ma made me uh, uh, think about if I should use uh, um, Firefox or I guess Pale Moon is a better the more based uh, choice in that case uh, but whatever thank you for watching everybody hope you have a great day uh, bye bye